How would you describe the current state of machine learning and what are the major challenges we're facing right now? Machine learning today is a very lively uh, research field and it's a community which is getting larger uh, where many people doing different things from mm, computing, algorithms, statistics, uh, there are uh, applications, and uh, I like to think about myself as a person which is primarily interested, in fact, in applications. They are meeting uh, and uh, getting inspirations from each other. And so it's, I find very difficult to think about one specific challenge. Uh, there are many, in fact. And uh, here at this conference, we are, in fact, looking at seeing examples. So depending on the type of person you meet uh, and you're going to, to, to be, to be uh, exposed to different type of challenges. Myself, I, I've been working over the last few years to the problem of uh, trying to get out as much interesting information from the type of data that you have at disposal. And in particular, I think that it is challenging when you're working with, let's say, the two opposite views, which is having too little data or too many data. So the big, big data sort of thing is not the only problem that you can face. And in fact, uh, if you look at things from the opposite side, we may want to try and gather interesting or useful information sometimes from very little data. And this is like a different possibility and uh, again, a different type of challenge. So you don't have to, uh, to do too much uh, number crunching because you have uh, small systems, but at the same time you may have uh, a very difficult mathematics because, uh, because the, the amount of information there is hidden somewhere, but difficult to, difficult to be found. Right, and what are some of the more interesting real world applications of machine learning you're seeing? I, uh, I have a bias here because I'm primarily working in uh, visual perception and so most of the things I follow and most of the things I find interesting are in fact uh, in the direction of dealing with visual data even if I think that multimodal systems are quite interesting. So the idea of putting things together which come to you in a rather heterogeneous form like images, videos, text or uh, opinions of different users like putting them together it for real and not just by a kind of uh, copy and pasting different solutions in all, in just to make a single one. Like having real interaction between different sorts of data. Uh, I think it is an interesting thing and, I, and, I, and, and that could give us, that could, could lead, lead us to very, very interesting applications. Anyway, my, my, as I was saying, my main interest uh, is uh, besides uh, like my, what, what I would like to see, let's say in 10 years, what I'm looking at today uh, is in primarily in uh, extracting information from, from images and videos. And there you can find uh, quite a lot of uh, interesting applications. And even this morning, while I was attending my uh, session, I, 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 I had the opportunity of seeing examples that are interesting and promising. And that. And, and so you mentioned what you would like to see in 10 years. What would you like to see in what 10 years? What would I like to see, see in 10 years? I don't know. I think that uh, uh, there, there is this thing which is scary and, and inspiring in this at the same time, which is like this idea of having intelligent systems that uh, can understand you and in a sense they can anticipate your, your, your needs or, you know, like having the, the, the uh, the robot at home, let's say, sort of idea. Uh, it's, it is scary, many people are scared. Uh, to personally, uh, working a little bit in that field, I feel that we can be not too scared <laughs> because there are still quite a few things to do, but it is, it is true that uh, in 10 years we may have uh, a lot more than we have now in that direction, like uh, uh, artificial systems that can understand uh, biological systems as we are a little bit more and uh, being a little more, how can I say, uh, empathic with us and uh, that could be an interesting direction and there is quite a lot of work going on in that. Right. Okay. And so in a, a recent talk you addressed regular, regularization, <laughs> I'm going to trip on that word, <laughs> regularization <laughs> methods for machine learning. Can okay. you talk a little bit about what those methods are and what some of the application scenarios are? Okay, so now I'm not going to be able to say it myself. <laughs> Regularization <laughs> methods for machine learning is just a way, it's a just a, how can I say, a complex, a cl complex word to describe a, a, a type of techniques that uh, uh, in a sense uh, are based on a very general model 
so in, in a sense, it's like uh, uh, writing a, a very complex uh, system in such a way that you can study it, uh, let's say, from the theoretical point of view, uh, as if it was just one problem. But in fact, then you can sh specialize it so that you actually end up with different algorithms with their own specificities that allow you to address the, the different uh, applications and different, uh, different uh, tasks uh, like uh, classification or regression or feature selection or more in general data representation, adaptive data representation. And so it is difficult to say where we can apply it because in fact uh, that general idea can be uh, applied to, to, to very different scenarios and uh, uh, ranging from unsupervised learning to supervised learning depending on the amount of prior information that we have. And uh, in fact, what I like is the fact that the theory is very neat, very clean, and very, very, and it has been studied quite a lot. So it's uh, like a, a theoretically sound method, but at the same time, it can provide us with uh, algorithmics which make it uh, useful for real in the real world. And it allows us to kind of uh, uh, have uh, different contributions and to exploit prior information in a different way. So we have on one side the possibility of uh, inserting prior in terms of data, uh, which could be uh, associated with outputs as it is in the supervised case, but also further information or further prior, or for instance, on the internal structure of the data that we have at disposal. And this is quite useful in practice. Interesting. So shifting a little more broadly, what emerging areas of machine learning are you keeping an eye on? When you read papers and studies, what, what is it that you read and what areas are you finding most compelling? So at the, at the moment there are two main directions that I find interesting. The first one uh, is in uh, um, like time series analysis. So it's a specific type of data where there is the temporal uh, information which is in a sense leading and, and uh, giving a specific structure to data and uh, of course time series appear all over in finance, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in behavior analysis, there are different sorts of applications you can find uh, but I think it's a type of data where we can actually find quite a lot of interesting information if we learn how to look for it. And then the other thing which I, I'm actually following quite closely is, uh, let's say, domain adoption or transfer learning. So I, I become good at addressing, at tackling a specific problem within a specific domain, so considering a specific set of data, and then somebody comes in and asks me a similar but different solution, and I'd like to to, to be able to address this new problem without having to start again from scratch. And so the idea of transferring some of the knowledge from one domain to the other, I think it is uh, uh, interesting and useful and I'm following it uh, quite a lot and uh, trying to see if I can contribute to that. Okay. And so last question for mm -hmm. you on a more personal level. What people and projects are you following? What are you finding personally exciting these days? So, um, the one of the thi it's not, okay, it is related to w what we were discussing before, but there is one, one uh, theme which I find interesting and uh, I'm following it uh, as, a, I don't know, as an external observer in a sense. Uh, it's, um, uh, I'm actually involved in a, in a project with, this, uh, with a group of cognitive, cognitive scientists. This is a difficult word for me. And uh, they are, in fact, a developmental cognitive scientists. So they, they look at children, uh, at the, the, I mean infants, in the very early stages of life, and they try, and they try to infer and to understand in what way we learn things after we were soon after we were born. And of course, I have, a, how can I say, a, a data scientist view of the problem because, in a sense, I would like to give, to obtain some inspiration on how an artificial system could gather information in, let's say, in a similar way. So this, the, this idea of having models that are biologically inspired, uh, it, it, to some extent, interests me and I find it compelling. So um, I'm actually following in particular the group of these, a group of researchers which are working on uh, uh, trying to understand uh, in what way the human, I mean the small humans, uh, learn to uh, interact with, their, with similar, so like with other human beings. And it appears that, for instance, by when we are very little, you know, that little children, they look at their hands quite a lot. And of course, nothing is done 
uh, I mean, everything is done on purpose, and it seems that in, uh, while they are watching, they are in fact, in fact building models of the human dynamics, which then can generalize uh, to more complex uh, uh, skills and, and actions and so on. I find it very, very inspiring, and, uh, and, and uh, we are actually, uh, we have a small project where we are trying to replicate on an artificial system this, this type of incremental behavior, and uh, I like it very much, in fact. Well, interesting. Thank you very much today for talking with me. It's been fun. Okay, thank you.